Good afternoon. Getting to the quarterfinal of a major darts tournament is one thing, but seeing the job through to the end is another matter altogether. So what does it take to put your name on the trophy? It's quarterfinal time. This is where it starts to get serious. You're three matches away from lifting the trophy. But you need to be able to last the pace. Oh, that is ruthless. You've got to have it up here. Oh! You've got to have it in here. He's on fire! Ignore the noise. Oh! Ignore any aggro. Oh! Score heavy. That's more like it. And hit your doubles. Oh, yes. How about that? Oh, fantastic! Sounds easy, doesn't it? We know nothing's easy up here. A brilliant finish. Oh, that was popular. Oh, great darts. Fabulous from the world number one. Well, here's how we line up for our quarterfinals this afternoon at the European Championship. Remember, the semi-finals and the final will follow on later on tonight. We'll be on air at 7 o'clock then. But we start this afternoon with the defending champion, Michael Van Gerwen, who's in sparkling form on Friday night when he saw off Ian White. He's up against Simon Whitlock, who's impressive himself as he whitewashed Alan Norris in the second round match. Then it's a battle between two men in great form as the Australian Kyle Anderson takes on the big Austrian Mensur Sulovic. Daryl Gurney against Peter Wright looks like another highly competitive one. And we finish with the man from St Helens, Michael Smith, who edged a 10-9 thriller against Benito van der Pass last night. What a game that was. He's up against the impressive new kid on the block, Rob Cross. All those games, best of 19, all the first 10. Chris Mason, Alan Warren a little are with us again. Looking very menacing you were, all serious on the stage there. All angry and all that. I got a bit scared, moody. actually. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you can be quite mean and moody, that is true, actually. Now, we are very much looking forward to these matches this afternoon. Uh, Peter Wright is one who's in good form in terms of the matches that he's won, but not necessarily the way he's been playing during his matches, and won a match against Johnny Clayton last night. Didn't take his chances. It's a match he could have lost quite easily. I mean, if we go back a week, when he, uh, in the German Masters, when he had two dodgy games in the first two rounds, could have got beat and he went on to win the game and played his best game in the final. Could we see the same again? But he really could have got beaten in this game halfway through the game. He was 4-0 down, got back to five apiece, then Johnny Clinton missed numerous chances. But despite that, Peter Wright did have a good ending. He had two 11 darters caught to the end and still averaged nearly 99. So relieved Gurney, in the end. Gurney could be all wrong for Wright, you know, he's, he's got that type of game that I don't, and he's got that experience now and that inner belief. Now, I don't think he will let him get away with what he got away with against Clayton. Yeah, Daryl Gurney looking very calm and focused at the moment. You can just see there from Peter Wright how relieved he was to get through that, being 4 0 down, then 5 5, and then squeaking through. But of course, Wright is so experienced and he's got that advantage over Daryl Gurney, who himself is in very good form. Yeah, he's, he's, on the, he's on the crest of a wave at the moment, isn't he, Gurney? He's won his first major, uh, multiple winner this year and in the last 12 months. And he, he, he fears no player. He knows if he goes up there and plays his A game, uh, he's got the chance to beat anybody, including, you know, in, including Peter Wright. So, I, you know, it's a, it's a real pick and match, that one. I could, you know, I could quite easily make a case for both. And it's just how it will unfold early on, I think. I think Gurney's more likely to get frustrated if things don't go well early, whereas we know with, with Wright, you'll just sit back and wait for those moments to arrive and, and take advantage. Yeah, Daryl Gurney now up to number four in the world, yeah. which is absolutely fantastic for him. Now, somebody who we always talk absolutely loads about for very obvious reasons is Michael Van Gerwen. We haven't really talked about him too much in this tournament because he's just gone about his business yeah. very calmly, quietly, very confidently. But how ominous is that? Yeah, I mean... He, He's number one in the world for a reason. He, he's the best dart player out there, um, and by and by quite a distance, you know when he's firing, he's got a different focus about him. When he when he came out for this match against White, you could tell he was absolutely hyped for it. Um, you know he has in times ten he gets in a lead and tends to sort of drift off and, and lose focus. In that match, he was 100% switched on from from start to finish. He's, he's, he's the man to beat. Mm. And MVG playing Simon Whitlock. Now, in the first round here last year, Simon yes. Whitlock had a dart to beat him. 
lost it and then a week later was whitewashed by him in the World Series finals. It feels yeah. like there's something mental about that battle. Well, he's certainly got the upper hand on Simon, hasn't he? He has done for the last few years, as I suppose he has with quite a lot of players. But if Simon's going to win against Michael, this is probably the opportunity, because he's playing really well, and Michael isn't, in my view, at full throttle yet. Mm. And the, mm. and the, the one problem for Whitlock has at the moment, he's a throw behind. You know, Michael's tournament average is over 100, so that's, you know, five visits or less. Uh, Whitlock some 10 points behind and over a game of this distance um, He's just going to be open to getting broke, you know more or less every time he, he's on throw So it's a, it's a tough ask for Whitlock, but as we know he's find, finding form. He's confident again He's throwing much better, but anybody else apart from MVG you'd have a show mm. Rob Cross is an interesting one. We've talked about what a phenomenal breakthrough year he had He came from in February He was ranked zero in the world rankings and now he's up to 26 ranked zero. I like that. <laughs> as in he came in at zero yeah. Of course in uh, in February and look where he is now Interesting bit of experience from yesterday on the big stage He played against Chizzy who had a back problem and it seemed to unsettle him He was playing fine and then he realized that Chizzy wasn't playing at his full game and it affected him it it definitely affected him and he confirmed it to me later on that you could see that he'd lost focus he was looking around seeing what was going on he threw some good darts here and there but his scoring power seemed to disappear he got there in the end and got over the line and it's a lesson learnt from his point of view but uh, you know he's still going to be dangerous in tournaments because of the level he's playing at he's work in progress you know he, like you say he didn't have a tour card 12 months ago um, I mean, he's a fabulous player. The, the stats back that up. I've watched him on the, on the Pro Tours. You can watch a stream on, on the PDC channel. Uh, and some of the darts he's throwing are literally up there with anybody. But as I said, he can't be rushed. This is a different environment that he's not used to playing under. <clears throat> and it will take him time. You have all the talent in the world. Michael was no different. You know, when Barneveld first joined, it was a, you know, it was a new thing. Um, never mind a, a player with pretty much no experience with what we have with Cross. But... He will get there in the end, and it could be today. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a shock. Yeah, it's a great story. He's up against Michael Smith last on today. Well, as we mentioned, Michael Van Gerwen and Simon Whitlock kicking things off for us in the Etias Arena here in Hasselt. Both men have been looking ahead to their match with Dan Dawson. Michael, the defending champion against a former European champion, it's some way to start the quarterfinals. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very tough day for everyone. And uh, today is the day you have to perform well. And... Uh, yeah, I hope I can get my good feeling from uh, from Friday evening into today's uh, game, and then it uh, will be fine. But you need to make sure you get concentrated. Your your game is there, your focus is there, and then uh, we see what's going to happen. Yeah, difficult for me. Uh, last year had some sad memories. Had one dart to beat Michael in the first round, but best of 19 today. So different ball game. No, no, I'm not worrying about anything. Other people worry more than, than myself. Uh, but I just don't want to let myself down. I want to win tournament. That's why I come over here. And uh, I, I, I want to do a thing where I'm good in, and that's play darts as good as possible. And I think I played with a lot of freedom in the last game. I hope I also can do that today. If you can get through this game, do you think this title is yours for the taking? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm just playing one game at a time again, like last tournament. Didn't look too far ahead you know just you have to just analyze it and play one match at a time and break it down into small parts you need to be sharp because no one wants to lose first round and after that you get into your zone longer formats kicking in and then you can concentrate yourself better and focus yourself on the longer format on the on a proper game and yeah that's more in my uh, advantage to be fair and i hope i also can use it in the game later i'm playing pretty well this year i've had some good results and uh I just want to play my best every time, you know, I've got a lot of goals I still want to fulfil for the rest of my darting career. Title on the trot, Michael Van Gerwen. He's up against Simon Whitlock, who'll need to take all his chances against the world number one. He didn't manage to do that in the opening round here last year. Over to our MC John McDonald to get things up and running. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Etihad Arena here in Hassan. to the quarterfinal stages of the Unibet European Darts Championship, brought to you by the Professional Darts Corporation, live on ITV Sport. And at this time, we welcome the millions of viewers joining us around the world. It's time to meet 
the quarterfinalists. Ladies and gentlemen, from Australia, a former world finalist and former European champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the wizard, Simon. Now, ladies and gentlemen from the Netherlands, the current world number one, the reigning and defending three-time European Dance Champion and the reigning two-time champion of the world. a lot of Dutch support for Michael van Gogh and as you would expect here in Hasselt and opening up for us in the commentary box this afternoon is Alan Warren a little and good afternoon John Rawling good afternoon Jackie good afternoon everybody and uh, well Simon Whitlock might be a former champion back in 2012 but do you know 18 of the last 19 times these guys have met Michael van Gogh has been the winner Yes, wonderful match to start the proceedings here this afternoon in Hasselt, Belgium. Should be a cracker. Came very close to winning in the first round uh, last year against Michael van Gerwen, did Simon Whitlock. Had a match dart before losing 6-5, and he's back in form. He's throwing well, the Australian. But Michael van Gerwen, there were signs in the last round that he was ready to move up to another gear. An average of around about 105 when he beat Ian White. And we all know he can go higher than that. Looking for his fourth consecutive title. And in televised tournaments, only Phil Thank Taylor has ever done that before. Michael to throw first. Game on. Did it in the European Championship, Phil, the Premier League, the Worlds and the World Match Play. And Michael Van Gerwen trying to join, well... A club which amounts to two members. Quarterfinals of the World Series last year in Glasgow. Michael beat Simon 10 0. Well, Whitlock just with an early opportunity here to capitalise on a, a start which, well, the crowd will be hoping for something superb from Van Gerwen as he's got a bit of early mosquito trouble. That's a hassle speciality if. Uh, doesn't worry him too much, does he? Some rather swanky new apartments under construction by the side of the uh, indoor port that there is in Hasselt. If you're thinking of buying one for huge money in the unlikely event, just bear in mind that you will have those little things as companions. Yes. You'll remember last year, John. <laughs> Who could forget? <laughs> I was bitten on parts that other flies can't reach. Oh, great darts. Well, he didn't leave a finish, but still was a good visit. 
but this one would be a better one. Ooh. 134. Fabulous setup. So Whitlock can do no more than hammer away on the big numbers and hope that Van Gerwen for once looks fallible. Well, he doesn't want to be going too far behind early on. Just break after the five legs as normal. Wants to make sure he's still in the match. Very hard player to chase, obviously, Michael Van Gerwen. And that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Michael, who lives in Vlyman, which is only about a one and a half hour drive away, but he's chosen to stay in the hotel for this one. Decision possibly influenced by the fact that baby daughter Zoe is less than three months old at home with wife Daphne. Yeah, maybe not as much sleep as he may require. That's the point, as any parent will tell you. This has got a job to do. Simon Whitlock's one uh, televised title was this one. 40. In Mulheim in Germany back in 2012. He was the runner up the following year, beaten by A.D. Lewis. He had that one doubt at the double, 81. didn't he, last year against Michael Van Gogh in the first That's round? The one. But he's got some form back, hasn't he? Found his way to the final of the Grand Prix, and he's got himself up into number 11 in the rankings, and he could potentially break back into the top 10. And of course, he's. His long-term aim, he wants to have a good world championship, but he wants to get back in the Premier League. Yeah, he certainly does. The consistency level has increased as well. Obviously, getting to the final, a major final, helps. But when you look at all the Pro Tour and the European Tour events as well, as a whole... 91. He's certainly getting back to some form, the form that got him to one of the household names, certainly down in Australia. Very, very popular over in Germany as well, wasn't he? They loved him there. All sorts of extraordinary fancy dress here today. He's going to go for it. Oh. Well, Van Gerwen's got no checkout, so Whitlock will have first dip on his own throw to retain the throw. Well, this is vital, Alan. Well, he's got options. Normally 25 for tops. He's got the 25, sometimes there's a small degree of difficulty because you can hit the bullseye, 45. but he hasn't hit it. Well, Shanghai on 20s, is he about to be punished early on? Oh, that's unlucky. Just the wrong side of the wire. So important for Simon Whitlock to get straight into this match. Ping this double as soon as possible. Yep, that'll do. Well, he's into the game. That'll make him feel a lot better. First to ten, let me remind you, at this quarter-final stage. 100. Talked earlier on about, uh, well, yesterday, in fact, about uh, the darts of Benito van der Pass, which uh, have that sort of looping trajectory. Very different is this man. He launches it in a much more purposeful Six. manner. It really lets him go, doesn't he? He does. Get some welly behind them. Going from 10 foot. He's been, uh, been working out a bit, the wizard. There's a bit less of him than there was. He's got himself into better shape, and I think that's uh, being reflected by his improved form. I think, in general, John, he looked at everything in the game that may improve him. Looked at practice. He's obviously got some glasses on now. A little bit of fitness, just looked at everything around, and it certainly paid dividends. Yeah, he'd maybe, he'd maybe just fallen out of love with it a little bit, hadn't he? But so often you see players when they get on the slide, that's kind of the end of it. But uh, full marks to him for turning it around. 57. Yeah, I one, good shout for the Premier League, as you said. A very popular player. 58. Well, Whitlock's a long way back here. Even uh, 180 wouldn't exactly have Van Gerwen quaking, and now he's nowhere near a checkout. 56. Michael Uruguay, 72. Well, he hasn't yet got his scoring boots on. Tops then for 2 1. Yes, on the and that makes it two doubles out of two well, for Michael Van Gerwen. Yeah, two good legs on throw for Van Gerwen. 140. Early doors, still waiting for the first maximum of the match. Often these guys, they practice, you know, for 
two, three, well, you'd know, of course, having done it, but it's two or three hours that they'll go into the practice room before before the match actually begins. And if you're somebody like Peter Wright, you've got three hours of uh, hairstyling before Wait, that as well. That? He's got a, a six-hour prep if he's on. If he's first on, he'd be up having to start at about six. I don't think Michael has to worry about that. <laughs> no, no, he's not. 140. <laughs> it's just a quick polish. Yeah, it's a strange one, but it seems to work for him, doesn't it? Everybody has their own way. 100. Well, you see the number of uh, the number of uh, Peter Wright Mohican-style haircuts out there. They're hugely popular over here in Europe. Played in all the European events, I think, this year, Peter, and won five of them. Yeah, he has. He's played very well. Loves it over there in Europe. My dear, one eighty-four. So this is for 3-1, double 12, double 6, there it is, that's the break. Michael Yeah, four on the doubles as well. A break at the end of this leg, Alan. He yeah, hasn't got the high scoring yet, despite leading 3-1, but the double finishing has been exceptional. Still waiting for our first 180 in this match, could it be now? 140. Happy close. with the visit, but he was looking for the 180 there. He could see with a little nod of the head. I think he thought it was in when he let that last dart go. 100. There's the double which clinched that last leg for Michael Van Gerwen. 36th televised trophies Michael Van Gerwen now has to his name. The record is becoming massively impressive. Yeah, he plays at an 95. exceptional level that everybody else is striving to achieve. Studying concentration, the face of Simon Whitlock. Two fine darts. An outside chance here for Whitlock. Left himself a finish, depending on what Michael Van Gerwen hits here. Well, he's got a treble. 96. Well, this is an opportunity for Whitlock. Even if he doesn't get it, he's got to leave it. He may go for 25 with the second dart. And the reason he went for that... 94. 25 and 1944. That last dart was a fine dart, wasn't it? So he's going to have another opportunity. Nicely set up by Van Gerwen, but this is Whitlock's chance to break back. 70 needed. Yeah. Get many chances against the throw against Michael Van Gerwen. This is one. Double 16 then. 54. You get your chances Michael like that, you have to one. take them. That'll be painful almost inevitably. Yeah, you don't get many. You kind of knew that. And I think the wizard knew it as well, Simon Whitlock. Looking a wee bit forlorn as he leaves the stage with Michael Van Gerwen in celebratory mood because he's already in this race to ten moved into a 4-1 lead. Simon Whitlock had a chance for a break. Wasn't to be. That's the time. Any margin of failure. And you get punished by this guy. That's been the principal difference so far. And Van Gerwen leading 4-1 as a result of that. That was a big moment in the match. Just wonder, Alan, you know, Simon Whitlock l winning his last match against Alan Norris, coming through 10-0 maybe maybe just didn't do him any favors when he's coming into this what do you, what's your thoughts on that well i'm sure at the time he was happy with the Sit win and happy Simon by winning 10-0 but i Game know what on. you mean because he's not really got that much stage practice if you want to call it that and been pushed and all of a sudden he's up against the world number one and reigning seven. champion michael van Gerwen wasn't exactly pushed of course he beat ian white 
What's an average of over 99, beat him 10-1. It's funny, yesterday he came into the press area and Ian said something like, I had him going, you know, I had him in trouble. He said he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do with the rest of his evening. <laughs> Yeah, that's what seven. happens, Michael Van Guren, similar to what Phil Taylor used to do. He can roll you over very quickly. Got that killer instinct. Safety. Whitlock's going to have to start scoring more heavily than this, or he could be blown away. Could be another break here. Yeah, currently at 86, and that's not good enough. 134. Van Guren not in top gear, just under 100 is average. 170s a possibility. He's been good on his doubles, though, hasn't he? Four out of six. Well, he doesn't have to go for this because he's got well, he's got six anyway from there, so that doesn't matter. Nice. Yeah, he's had he's hammered him on occasion in the past. Won his last eight against Simon Whitlock, going back to run going back to October last year. Ninety. Yeah, and Simon's come to this tournament in pretty good form as well, mm. and confident. Double eight. There's another one, 5 1. So well, he might be confident and he might have had a resurgence in form, but he needs a resurgence in form right now, or well, this is going to be over in quick time. First maximum of the match, would you believe? And now averaging over a ton. 140. A decent reply from Whitlock, but he needs more of that on a regular occasion. Crowd's getting excited. I was momentarily. You can always tell when you're excited, John. Not happy with the second one. 44. Well, that's not a great setup, but Whitlock's a long way back. 124, though. He won't worry too much about that. Yeah, he's so far ahead in the leg. And when he's hitting doubles like he has been doing in the early part of the match, spells trouble for Whitlock. Well, he doesn't have to get this because he's got six from here. Treble 18's the dart, he's got it for Bullseye. 99. He almost knew he was going to have a go at that. Yeah. He Wants to please the fans, doesn't he? He's, there's a small Safety. army of them here today. They're queuing up early to get in, and it's absolutely packed. Double four. Mm. 21. Whitlock, no finish, though. Yeah, that's what's happened. His scoring hasn't been good enough in the leg. In for a chance at a big finish. Just not found his range. Certainly with the first dart, a decent visit there, but probably too late in the leg. Well, he needs to get it this time, I would think. It's not lying too cleverly. And it's even worse now. No well, score. well, we Five mentioned about his finishing. Was so good in the early part of the match. All of a sudden, it's all gone to pot. Tops. This is a must-get for Whitlock. Double ten. Keeps his Seven. flickering chances alive. That's a break of throw. Well, sometimes you can have a terrific leg, and sometimes you can nick a leg, and it can sometimes spur you on. Let's see if Simon Whitlock can start scoring heavier than he has done so far. Safety. It's not what he wanted. And he's going to hurt. He didn't capitalise quite as he would have wished. A little shake of the head from Michael Van Gerwen. Dutch contingent of supporters. Bit of 10% yellow class in that lad, didn't he? 41. Yeah, Enjoying themselves. They saw themselves on the big screen then, didn't they? <laughs> 99. Yeah, Simon stole the leg there. And didn't really capitalise. 101 in two visits. This isn't what it's expected. This is better. His first maximum. Needs more of that Whitlock if he's going to claw his way back into this. 
because Van Gerwen is capable of going up a level like that, as good as a maximum. Well, I was just going to say before that visit, after Whitlock hit the maximum, if he can do this in two visits, he could take the leg, but that's all changed. Oh dear. 50. And he's left himself on 170. Van Gerwen then. Treble 19 for the bullseye. It's just outside. It was 98. below the wire. Well, he went for the big 10 to make sure he had a finish. There's a two doubts at 20 in the previous visit. We're blocking the bed. And he hit the maximum. He was way ahead in the leg. 58. Time though, isn't he? 28. Whitlock didn't threaten there. Double 14. That's a decent markup, and again, surely this time, in we go. 6-2, only needs another four. Game on. Straight into the next leg for Van Gerwen. Well, Simon was just showing a few signs that his scoring was improving, but it led him down towards the end of the leg. Chants and songs go up for Van Gerwen again. They were there in numbers, weren't they, earlier this summer when he won the Dutch Masters for the fourth time. He kind of reserves his uh, vintage performances for that one. Here we go, here we go. 140. Angela nod for MVG. He's winning without having, without having to really get into top gear at the moment. He's averaging, what, 98, six doubles out of 17 now. Brilliant finishing earlier on, but he's had a... A bit of a sticky patch of late, but he's still 6-2 up. Yeah, signs are looking ominous for Simon Whitlock, and Messi can really turn this around. As we mentioned earlier, he's in good form coming into this tournament. He hasn't shown any signs of that yet consistently throughout this match. This is better. 134. Darts gives him uh, just a little bit of a squeak, maybe. Bullseye. Oh, he decides not to go for it. Well, that's a statement to Whitlock. I'm playing safe because I don't think you're going to get this. Play a little mind game with him. That would have been interesting if he'd have got that one because that would have maybe turned the screw just a little bit. Meantime, Van Gerwen takes out the game shot and leads 17. Easing through, isn't he? Easing through. Break at the end of this leg. 41. Is yeah. it going to be 8-2 or 7-3? That wasn't the start that Whitlock wanted. I think, we can, uh, I think we can kind of guess who's favourite now. Yeah, strangely enough, the two legs that Simon has won, he's just about scraped them, hasn't he? Yeah, he's not uh, not gone anywhere near the sort of uh, standard that we know he's capable capable of producing. And Van Gerwen is coasting towards victory. Cruising away in Hasselt. Fifty-eight. And the throw is under massive pressure again as Van Gerwen moves on towards the finish. With Whitlock way back. How about that? Brilliant. Maximum number two. 56 required. Whitlock after nine darts, 342. Exceptional scoring in the last three or four legs. Well, he needs this more for the confidence of the rest of the match. Hasn't got it. Potential 11 darter then for Van Gerwen. Double 10. Well, 12 darter. He is throwing so well now. And is within two of victory, and Simon Whitlock, he knows that defeat is staring him in the face, and this awful run against Michael Van Gerwen, he hoped he was going to put it to an end, but it's continuing. Van Gerwen at the break, lead take two.
joining us. We are in the quarterfinal stage of the European Championship. Normal service being resumed here by Michael Van Gerwen, the overwhelming favourite to well, win this championship for a fourth for consecutive first. time. And he leads Simon Whitlock, the Australian, by eight legs to two and needs just two more, and he'll be through to the last four. Yeah, Simon Whitlock just hasn't scored heavily enough. He's been in good nick recently as well, hasn't he? Well, that's what's perplexing for me, really, because he obviously wasn't the favourite for the match, but I thought it would have been a lot closer. 100. He hasn't had many doubts at the double either. Two out of six. He's only averaging 87, 100. and you can't do that against Michael Van Gerwen. He's been on the receiving end of some tankings over the last couple of years, though, hasn't he, against Michael Van Gerwen? Maybe it's just he thinks... Well, they, I suppose he would argue the toss and say that's very much not the case. But there's bound to be subliminally a case of, well, I've done OK to get to this stage, get to the last, get to the last eight, make 15 grand, 96. and OK, I'm playing the world number one now, but I've played all right apart from here. Yeah, everybody's expecting me to lose. I was expecting a little bit more from Sam Whitlock. Just on his scoring, really. 134. Consistent scoring. Maybe you can uh, maybe you can just show us a little bit of a glimpse of what he's been producing still in the time remaining. 90. It's certainly put in good stead for the rest of the season. Turn 40 here would make him feel better. Good second one. 125. Not bad third. No, that's not bad. Gives him a gives him a chance if. Van Gerwen, or as, as Van Gerwen will now, miss out on the 156. This is a chance for a break of throw. 56. 101, Alan. 101. Well, sometimes that's some strange ways to go for these. Sometimes go to the ball with the first one, yeah. Two double 19s. It's a strange one, but it's the way it goes. 63. Try that one at home, folks. A spotter's nightmare. Van Gerwen. Oh, good dart. Tops. 80. Stowe, another chance for Whitlock. Well, he's had one of them. He's got to go for it now, and he? he knows where it is. Yeah, go straight for it because of the angle of his dart. Double one. Well, there's not too many who'd choose to go that way either, but Simon goes his own way. A little smile from Michael Van Gerwen, as much as to say, well, what's all that about? Simon Whitlock wins it, though, and it's now 8-3. Yeah, he does have some strange ways of finishing. We've seen that over the last few years with Simon. But certainly that 101 going for the ball first and two double 19s. 78. Exhibition stuff, isn't it? Well, if he's tried it a few times and done it, that'll maybe be transfixed in his head, thinking he can do it more often than not. Our programme director and our spotter currently tearing their hair out behind the scenes. <laughs> 99. What is he doing? Great darts. Well, we've got three more quality quarter-finals coming up. Kyle Anderson, Mensa Sulevic, Peter Wright, Darrell Gurney and Rob Cross. Michael Smith 100. following this one, which is well and truly going the way of Michael Van Gerwen. Yeah, he's won it 100. as a canter, hasn't he? If he manages to get over the line now, Whitlock, though, with the throw. Van Gerwen might just step up and take that 1 6 1. That's good. Particularly now, there's a bit of pressure on it. No, he can't do it now, though. So, another chance for Whitlock. He wasn't taking them early on, despite them being very few and far between. 84. How's he going to go for this one? Well, he's gone bullseye. Okay, double 17. Wow. Well, work that one out. Bull double 17. A lot of people would uh, think. There were many other ways of doing that. Simon Whitlock, though, it worked. There's another angle of looking at it as well. It may be he knows he's not been playing well and scoring well. So far behind, he's trying something different. I know he goes unusual ways on occasions. Just trying something a little bit different to get himself going. 
certainly, uh, certainly, maybe just uh, sows a seed into Michael's head, and he's watching that and on the receiving end of it and thinking, what on earth is he doing? It's working. And meantime, he's <laughs> taking a couple of legs. <laughs> needs to do it again. Maybe, uh, maybe in the back of his mind, he was One, thinking rather than ball, it was going to be 25, which would have left him the 19, followed by tops. But you know, that, maybe that's just a bit too conventional for Simon. 145. Probably. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, good last start for Van Gerwen. Leaving 170, going for the 25. Oh, that's a great first dart. And following well. 100. Oh, I thought Martin that second Martin one was in. So they're both on 170. That's one in. Bullseye now for 9 4. Yeah. Oh, what a check out! Well, he <laughs> awakens, <laughs> and Simon Whitlock, you see the round of applause, a little bit of a case of anything you can do. I, my old friend, can do that a little bit better. Yeah, they both left it, but he never got the shot. Whitlock, but he appreciated. Wow. The finish for Michael Van Gogh, and so did the crowd. We all love to see the big 1-7-0. 60. He's not really had to get into the stratospheric realms of pure genius, but there have been glimpses of it from Van Gogh, nevertheless. Yeah, I was just saying to Simon there, you've had two strange finishes, 60. what about this one? <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe he thought that Whitlock was going to take out that 170 as well. Having uh, just got himself a wee bit of confidence. As it is now, though, Van Gerwen wins this leg, it's all over. 139. Bit, bit more spirit with Simon Whitlock in the latter part of this match. Oh, he's looking for 171 to leave the 170 Whoa, again. And he hits it! <laughs> wow. Well, that would be just extraordinary if he did it again. Meanwhile, Whitlock can do no more than get himself on to as easy a finish as possible. Oh, that's a great dart. Yeah, good thinking as well. 25 would have left a two dart, but Bull even better. And Van Gerwen this time cannot do the 170. Oh, he wanted that one, didn't he? You could see the smile on his face. Now then, 72. Surely a must take for Whitlock. Oh, a double 18 again. Double nine. Yeah, oh, how about that? <laughs> He's enjoying himself up there now, Simon. I bet he's wishing now he started the match a little bit better. It would have been a lot closer. 58. Even a swing of one leg would have been 86. Yeah, yeah. And he had he had opportunities, you know, Alan. He did. He had a bad start, but he had a few opportunities after that. It went to 4-1 well, when it could easily have been 3-2. Yeah, he absolutely. had a dart there. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes those one darts are here and there in between, but when you're getting two or three, it's different as Van Gerwen steps in. Just to let him know who's boss. That's his third maximum of the match. And he is moving towards victory now. That's not what Simon needed. Good last dart, but he's thinking, what on earth is that second? Brilliant cover shots. Yeah, wonderful scoring from the world number one. And he's looked every inch the favourite that he is, hasn't he? 81. As I said at the start, he's not on full cylinders, but he's getting pretty close. Double 18, double 18, here we're going for. Not 89. quite, but a good setup. Going for the uh, grandstand finish. Whitlock not on a finish, so Van Gerwen will come back. Looking for tops then to complete 74. his victory and to make this 10 5. Tops needed. That's a good marker. This time, and tops delivered. The great run of Michael Van Gerwen against Simon Whitlock continues. He's taken the last nine now. 19 out of 20. And Michael Van Gerwen is through to the last four with a victory by 10 legs to five.
Michael Van Gerwen's winning run against Simon Whitlock has continued. It's now nine in a row. This massive 170 checkout, symptomatic of Michael's form. The Wizard of Oz did rally from 8-2 down, but it was rather too little, too late in the end. Well, Michael averaged 100. He hit three 180s. Simon missed some key doubles, notably what would have taken him to 3-2 at the break, but he missed it. It was 4-1. And the rest is history. So Michael will meet either Kyle Anderson or Mensal Sulovic in tonight's semi-finals. And we can hear from Michael now. He's downstairs talking to Dan Dawson. Michael, another 100 average, 170 checkout. You've only dropped eight legs so far this tournament. The dominance continues. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing too bad. It wasn't a fantastic game, but I showed a couple of fantastic things with the 170, a couple of good legs on the right moment. And I wasn't superb, but... That's more in the tank for later on. You've won this the last three years. Only Phil Taylor has managed to win a, a major title four years in a row, but you like putting your name in the record books, don't you? Of course, you always want to win tournaments. It doesn't matter what tournament it is. I always want to perform well and I always want to show everyone what I can. And uh, um, I'm playing OK. I, I can do better later on. And yeah, I'm, I can relax now and wait till... Uh, the winner of next game is going to face me later on, and uh, you, you, need, you need to turn up your A game if you want to win this tournament. Simple as that. The, the, the day gets harder and harder, and uh, you, you have to perform, and that's the only thing where you can do. Either Carl Anderson, the Auckland Arts Master, or Mensur Sulevic, the Champions League winner. You've got good records against both of them, but are they different animals now that they have recently won big stage titles? Do you think? Yeah, but they didn't play me. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, they're both fantastic players uh, and they're both in great form, to be fair, but I'm here to stop them and I, I need to make sure I play my own game and I, didn't, I don't want to look to their games because I have to perform well myself and uh, you, you, do, you, need to have to, uh, you need to have to do the right thing at the right moments for you in your own game when you play them, but first they need to play each other, so I can't wait now for later on and uh, I feel good. I want to play well and I want to win this tournament, simple as that. Well, congratulations through to the semi-finals, Michael. Thank you very much.